Snipers, shelling, scarce food and medicine. The Syrian war grinds on with little hope of a swift conclusion and few outside eyes there to document the suffering. But the Post's Liz Sly was able to visit Aleppo, Syria last week, and she is now in Beirut, Lebanon, uh, and joining us by Skype to tell us some of what you saw, Liz. Thanks for joining us. It was a pretty dire picture, and in, in one of the things that Syrians seem to be dealing with, at least in Aleppo, are scarce resources, things like food and medicine. What did you see? Well, yes, one of the things that you notice very much in Syria, in, in Aleppo, is that everywhere you go, um, there are these long queues for bread. Um, on the days I visited, they actually had eased off a little bit compared to um, some of the previous days when there simply was no bread at all. But everybody has every day to go and stand in line for bread because there just isn't enough to feed everybody. And is it an active theater of war at this point? What's the, the level of the fighting? Yes, it is still an active theater of war. It has eased off a little bit since the summer when um, the, the Free Syrian Army first surged in and, and the government forces launched a counteroffensive to stop them and, and when pretty much the whole city was a battle zone. Now you have some um, pretty fixed front lines. Um, there's kind of a circle around the city, some of which is held by the Free Syrian Army, some of which is held by the government. But basically there is fighting going on in Aleppo somewhere in the city all of the time and you hear it. There's either shells going off a long way away or there's shells going off a little closer. And can we tell who's winning? Inside Aleppo, there's really a stalemate. In the big picture in the country, the rebels have been making gains against government forces. But one of the things they've told me is that they've kind of given up trying to take civilian neighborhoods at the moment because the story of Aleppo has really showed what a high price the civilians pay for that. What happens is the Free Syrian Army goes into a neighborhood, it takes control of it from the government forces, kicks the government forces out, but then the government comes back with heavy shelling and airstrikes, and basically it's only the civilians who suffer. And that risks losing the FSA a lot of support. It's one of the things that you notice in Aleppo as well. The fighters are not that popular. Tell us about the people you met there. What is their condition? What is their demeanor, their outlook? We did run into one woman in the street who was kind of begging. She didn't look like a beggar. It didn't look like she'd been a beggar before, but she seemed pretty desperate and she had two young children in tow. One of them didn't have a coat and was drenched through. So I stopped and talked to her. She had um, lost her husband a couple of months ago. He'd gone out to buy bread and had been killed by a sniper on the way home. Um, she had no income, nobody to support her. Um, she has some relatives, they give her some money, but she told me that on Sundays they just don't eat at all. Um, so it's very sad talking to her. You also met uh, a widow whose husband had, had died in the early days of the fighting and seemed to despair of what had happened in the nearly two years since. Yes, I was quite struck actually by the number of women I met who had lost their husbands in this fighting. In, in this woman's case, um, she's a teacher um, and she, her husband had joined the Syrian army and was killed in the first month of the fighting. She's got five children. Um, because she's a teacher, she's managed to make a very small amount of money taking in private students because all the schools are shut. Um, and, she, and she was very despairing as well. Obviously, she supports the revolution. Her husband was a fighter. But she doesn't see any chance of a solution anytime soon. She thinks it's going to continue for at least as long as it has, or has, has, has lasted already. And when I asked her whether she meant the five months in Aleppo or the two years of the revolution, she said the two years of the revolution. Liz, thanks so much uh, for filling us in. It's really fascinating and also heartbreaking stuff. Thank you.